My name is Tom Payne, and I have written a book called American Narrative, How One Family Helped Advance a Nation and Its Ideals Over Three Centuries. Uh, it's a book of family stories. I try to make people going back actually 400 years come alive, to think of them as real people, not perfect, not saints for sure, but somehow had some ideas that have, have stood the test of time, and we are grateful to them. They're ordinary folks who did things that they themselves hardly realized were extraordinary. But in, in the fullness of time, we can say thank you very much. They weren't alone. They weren't any more special really than lots of folks that were with them on their journey. But uh, they're my family stories, so I write about them as a person connected to them uh, as a family member. And if we're going back four centuries, let's not kid ourselves. I'm one of thousands, tens of thousands of descendants uh, of these people. So they're shared by everybody. I mean, I, I feel like you don't have to be related. You don't have to be a so-called descendant. We're all related. They're all of us. We're all connected. Okay. And so I want to make these connections continue. And these are unsung heroes, many of them. And I, I want to sing their praises because the way I sometimes describe one ancestor who was a signer of the Declaration of Independence, but nobody's heard of him, Robert Tree Payne. I say he needed a better publicist. Um, unlike his good buddy, John Adams, who knew exactly how to get the word out. And so uh, my job is to help get the word out about some of these unsung heroes that I, I have, through no, through no action of my own, I happen to be descended from. And so that's my role. And I enjoy doing it. Personally, I feel like I've always been fascinated by these family stories going back to age 10. Um, I, I, I fell in love with this 18-year-old uh, great-great uncle of mine who died at Gettysburg. I, I, he was the smartest kid in his class in school. He volunteers to fight. He gets killed leading his men towards Pickett's Charge at Gettysburg. And I, and I just felt like this guy had courage. He was smart. I want to be like him. So I always, I always identify with him, and I still do. I feel like um, you're connected and you feel, you feel it's almost like uh, it brings the past to life and it doesn't seem like it was that long ago. When you have these stories, you realize, wow, that was only yesterday. That's the way it starts. That's the way it feels. And for as a 10 year old, maybe it seemed like, oh, 150 years, 100 years ago it was then. Uh, okay, is that a long time ago? Well, as a 70 year old now, guess how I feel about it? I really feel like it was only yesterday. Because all of us, if we get to live to be 70, are suddenly going to realize, oh my God, I personally have lived like a quarter of the history of our nation. That's a huge chunk of it. So that's what happens without even you realizing it. Suddenly you wake up and you say, oh, heavens, it was all only yesterday. So there's this personal connection with these events that we, you may think were way long ago, but no, not so long ago. And that reminds you, there are people like us. And so how does that relate to the present, the second part of your question and, and our community and how we all gather together and think about these things is to say that these same kinds of people are what who we are and whatever they did, we can do. And then the same kind of issues that they fought over for better or for worse are still there challenging us today. We've made some progress. We've got a heck of a long way still to go. And it's gonna take more guts and more imagination and more decency on our part to carry this, to kick the ball ahead, to move it forward, to move it forward, to do our part as they did their part. So yes, we can identify with these, with, with former generations who realize they live within us. They were imperfect people too. We too can do great things despite our own insecurities, our own concerns. Yes, um, when push comes to shove, we'll do it. It's important to try to grab um, your reader from the first paragraph, from the first sentence in every chapter, in every book. And certainly in my writing, and, and uh, I'm by no means um, uh, a writer up there with Herman Melville or somebody, or William Shakespeare as a, as, a, as a playwright. But in my own way, I take my lessons from them. I learned a lot in school. I was encouraged by my teachers to learn the craft of writing. 
example about how you're supposed to uh, avoid needless repetition and, and write uncomplicated sentences and keep the, the narrative flow of each sentence moving ahead uh, expeditiously and keeping you going and avoiding needless repetition and confusion. So I've always been mindful of that, but uh, that's just the basic mechanics of it. Underlying all of that is, what is it that's gonna grab your reader's attention? What is it that um, could possibly uh, be of interest? And so in one of my chapters, um, I'm talking about a woman who is, is going to uh, become a, a martyr for feminism named Ann Hutchinson. And this moment in her life where she's just survived a terrible trial put on by all these men who hate the fact that she, as a woman in 1640, would dare to challenge the male authority then in power. And she did successfully, but they decided to banish her and she's pregnant. She's seven months pregnant, and it's winter, and there's snow on the ground, and she has to leave Boston and walk for 70 miles over snow-covered trails to get to what was then called Providence Plantation, which is now Rhode Island. Can you imagine that moment? Anyway, I was trying to. That was my lead for that chapter, thinking about what she'd been through, what lay ahead, and, um, and, and all the people waiting for her to come because they were, she was their spiritual leader and she'd been held up by this trial. So I thought, well, that's riveting. She's never been presented that way before because she's been talked about. She's not, by no means unknown, but uh, there's been a lot of confusion about her because there's a lot of religious uh, controversy and you can really, really get mired, so-called mired in the underbrush, just so confused by, by uh, those kinds of historical narratives that I, as a more popular writer, said, no, that's not the point of this lady. The point of it is her courage and how she was intellectually on a par with anybody in this new colony, but because only because she was a woman, uh, the, the, uh, the men who were running the colony uh, decided that she was a threat rather than complimenting or taking them to a better place. No, she was a threat. And so um, that was the main story for me. And so I, I chose to focus on that and to try to get through the religious controversy quickly and, and economically. So that, that's, that was a challenge for me as a writer. Uh, and so there are many challenges in writing these stories, but there is a narrative in there that has a sense of adventure, of courage, of, um, of, of a moment of, of, let's say, danger, or, or, or in the case of Sumner Payne, who's at Gettysburg, a moment of glory when he's just about to die, but he's loving every second of it. And we know this because his fellow officers wrote his father and those letters survive. And so you try to find moments like that to describe um, these fraught moments. How do you feel like stepping into their shoes can help a person uh, stand tall in their own? Well, I, you know, I love the way you put that. I think that standing tall is exactly what life is all about. We all need to stand tall no matter what we're up to, but we also need to realize that um, we just push onward. I mean, onward is a great word, and that's, you just never give up. You just pursue, persist, uh, and, and don't give up, no matter what your, your struggle is. But if you make mistakes, you, you, you have to admit them. You have to own up to them and keep moving on, because that's the greatest courage of all, is to admit those mistakes and keep going. But standing tall uh, in one's own shoes, uh, absolutely, um, can draw upon uh, connecting to those who came before us who did the same thing, absolutely. And it, be, it becomes this exercise where, okay, I can uh, identify with them, and then I can also, um, as, as I know you, you're thinking about, you, you can imagine your own self in the future because you've been able to identify with them in the past. So in, in, in other, it's where the past meets the future in a, in a kind of strangely holistic way. But I think um, it does give give us courage. So um, I think I think we have I we can imagine ourselves being a hero in some way. We'll be we'll be an unsung hero, and then we will also know that someday somebody will recognize that I too was a hero, because it pays forward that way. And I think it's very inspirational to think of ourselves that way. <laughs>